Well, good morning, you guys. It's currently 5.20 a.m. here in uh, just east of Tampa, Florida. And my husband and I just finished packing up the camper. He's going to be trailering the camper all the way back to Ohio while I ride my beautiful motorcycle. So it's time to start up my 2024 Harley Davidson Road Glide, check the official mileage, and get on the road. It's really dark, super hard to see, but got the camper all packed up we are going to be leaving at the exact same time heading back up to ohio i'm probably going to get there at least an hour before he does just because i'm on a motorcycle i can travel faster further and he's towing everything <clears throat> all righty so let's go ahead and Ooh, headlights are bright let's go ahead and check the odometer on this guy all right as of right now it says we have 4,065 miles exactly, and it is 5.27 a.m. Ready to go home? Yes. Okay, me too. See you at home. Yeah. <laughs> to go inside to pay. Ugh, I hate how annoying. This is why I'm not doing the receipt thing. Because I, I literally need to hop on the bike and go. And uh, having to walk inside for everything just takes way too damn long. just shy of 800 miles and it is 46 degrees Fahrenheit where I'm at right now. By the time I get into Ohio it's going to be in the 30s so my feet were already starting to go numb, hands were getting pretty ouchy and uh, I was like alright it's time to actually like sit down, take a break, grab some food for the first time today. It's 6.30 p.m. and uh, put all the heated gear on because I'm not stopping again. Got a little less than 200 miles until we get home and just over 100 miles until it hit the iron butt. So, gonna eat some food, hop back on the bike. We're home. I'm officially back in my garage. There's Oppa Boy behind me. And it looks like the official mileage is 1,076.8. Total mileage on the motorcycle, 5,142. And uh, just, just a little over 16 hours. Go ahead and get that all clocked in. It is 9.53 p.m., but I actually got here... Uh, 
maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago. I had to go inside because I was freezing cold. But I'm going to go ahead and um, shut up the garage, hop inside, take a hot shower. But look at this. Now, ain't that a sight? Woo! Okay, let's turn this baby off. Tomorrow. Good morning. Um, I successfully fell asleep. I feel like I've been in a car accident. My teeth are brown because I just chugged a whole bunch of coffee and I look like death warmed up, but I'm home. So nothing can dull my sparkle. <laughs> Time to start unloading and cleaning out the camper. Hi, honey. Hi. What time did you get home last night? 12.46. 12.46 a.m. <laughs> yeah. That was a long day for you and Midgey. Yeah. And then I didn't even go to sleep till like 2.30 because I still had to unload stuff from here that wouldn't freeze because it got down to 22 degrees last night. It, it's cold now. So that's why I had to winterize the camper as well. Oh, sorry. I switched the camera on him. But yeah, he had to winterize the camper before we even left Florida because the whole ride back home, it was in the 30s. Well, not the whole ride, but... It was in the 30s and 20s. It was a 31 degrees Fahrenheit when I got home and like 27 degrees Fahrenheit by the time he got home. So still winter in Ohio, even though it's technically spring. I, um, what was I gonna say? I'll face this way. The first couple hours of the trip, I was fine. I was awake, I was fine, but I was trying not to use my Cardo battery because like, you have to connect your, your Bluetooth headset to the communicator. Do you need a hand? Are you in gear? Put it in neutral. No, it's picking it up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. One, two, three. No. Three. Nope. It's sliding. Yeah, I'm gonna ratchet strap. Well, he ratchet straps those down. I'll chat with you guys. So, um first half of the day I didn't use my Bluetooth communicator device because I didn't want it to die. I knew I was going to be doing a thousand miles, 16 hours on the road, and it do doesn't stay charged that long. So I just left it off and counted in my head. I counted up to 2,275, I think, before I started losing track. That's how you know you're autistic. That's how <laughs> Jordan just said, that's how you know you're autistic. It's how I pass the time. That part was entertaining. I literally almost died three times. People just absolutely not staying in their lane. And that's it. Everything else was fine. Nothing else bad happened except that one gator back that kept throwing shrapnel all over me. That was very painful. Um, but yeah, people just not staying in their lanes, not looking. And thank God these new motorcycles have ABS. So, are you getting it now? Oh, yeah. really in there. No, it's my back wheel, I think. Your back wheel? Are you stuck in the... There. Why are you... You're in gear. Let go of the clutch right now and see. Weird. One bike out. If, I, if you want me to get the dine out, I gotta go put boots on. I'm in my Avatar Aang socks. <laughs> Hurry, let's uh, we're gonna unload some of this stuff and then get back to you guys. Eventually. All right guys, good morning. It is exactly one week since I filmed the last half of that video and it's 33 degrees Fahrenheit here in Ohio, but officially time to take the road glide over to Pharaoh Harley Davidson and get her 5K service. I cannot believe we're already doing the 5k service on this bike. I got a couple extra little parts that I'm gonna add on, but uh, I'm getting like out of breath and sweaty because I'm trying to put on literally all of my heated gear. So let's just go ahead and get dressed, hop on the motorcycle and head over to Faro East. Okay, set my cruise. It's so, like, can my visor please stop fogging up? That would be lovely. Anyway, 5,162 miles on old girl. I do think I uh, figured out a name for her. I don't know if I want to tell you yet because I don't know if it's 100%, but I'm really hoping that we can get these damn pockets fixed today. Uh, the little latches on those are broken. Please guys, 
if you know of a company that starts making the pockets like the older model generations where there's no latch, let me know because I'm buying them. I do not like the little, uh, the little clippy pocket. I just don't like it. It's unnecessary. So once again, I told you I did not document that uh, 1,000 miles in 24 hours because I was just tired. I was really ready to go home. I didn't want to care about taking pictures every single gas stop. I, I didn't even take my helmet off every single gas stop and it was great. I got home in record time because I just didn't care. It's my fourth iron butt and I know I did them. It is what it is, but it's just... One day I would like to actually get, you know, the little certificate so I can actually prove like I did it, but I don't need to prove anything. It's honestly like, it's not, it's, it's a vanity thing to be like, oh, I have an iron butt badge. I'm like, that's cool. That's, everyone has done an iron butt at least once in their life. If they're, you know, distance riders, not if you're just a normal rider and a weekend warrior and a fair weather rider, I don't ever expect anyone to want to do that because it sucks. <laughs> it's doable if it's warm, and you have the sunshine with you, but when it's cold and you're just tired and want to go home, it sucks. It never gets easier. But poor Jordan, he took, oh my gosh, like four, three or four extra hours than I did to get home. Once he hit those North Georgia mountains and up into Tennessee and Kentucky, he said the truck just couldn't do it. And uh, that's really, really a, a hard, a hard thing we're going to have to accept here soon is whether or not we're going to keep the camper. It's we don't have the truck for it and i'm sorry guys i don't want to go into debt to buy a big old truck to tow with if i'm not going to end up towing long term it's just it's one of those things i'm i'm very passionate about being debt free i don't live paycheck to paycheck i'm not in any credit card debt and i want it to be that way it's just a hard lesson i had to learn growing up i didn't have any money like we i grew into a family of love and good looks not riches <laughs> so i i'm very stingy with my money i'm like a dragon like a, a horde it's mine my gold don't touch it it's mine uh it's been a very hard lesson for me to learn as an adult because you know you're supposed to invest you're supposed to build credit you're supposed to do all these things and i'm just like no nope, put it in my savings account forget about it but of course i'm in my mid-30s I'm happily married, no children, uh, and you can't take it with you. So I don't know, it, it's something like, do I want to buy a truck like that? Or do I want to start doing something else? I don't know what this giant line down the middle of the road is. I'm just hoping it's not wet. It looks like someone's brakes locked up. That's what I think it is. I think a semi locked their brakes up, like, it, like their actual rotors or something like locked up. Thoughts on the bike so far? I made the right choice. I love this bike. Um, I don't think I'm going to put new bars on it. I really love the, the bars, how they feel, the ergos. I do feel like my hands are really wide, but that's just kind of what you get with these touring bars. So if there were more narrow, like maybe an inch narrower on each side, I feel like that would probably be more comfortable for a woman my stature. But as of right now, the height, lovely. The heated grips work amazing. Uh, thank God, because my heated gloves are not on. And I just really like the setup. The new windshield has 100% changed the whole ride on this motorcycle. I don't think I could have done that second iron butt without the windshield. It was an absolute game changer. There was one point at the very last gas stop, I had to put my helmet back on and I completely forgot about the earplugs and it was lovely. I had the windshield protecting me from the wind noise, the exhaust, which I'll talk about this exhaust later in the video, but I have a different exhaust on and uh, it's, oh, it, it's amazing. It's by far, so far, been the best upgrade I've done to this motorcycle. Well, it looks like where I need to go to get on. Yep, the highway is shut down. That's absolutely infuriating that I didn't know that until about a half a mile before I needed to use my exit. So I'm just following the semi trucks because they know how to get to I-70. I also know how to get to I-70, but oh God, damn it. I just watched a bird get hit by a car. Oh, baby stupid birds you have a whole freaking sky this is not a good morning <laughs> this is not a good video <laughs> i should just go ahead and turn the camera off and talk to you guys when we get to the dealership okay okay i need a break <laughs> poor bird service customer parking that's me 
unless it's a bike night or I'm getting serviced. <laughs> that sounded bad. Unless my bike is getting serviced. I don't get over here too much. You guys, they cannot keep the ST CBOs in stock, but look at the absolute insane amount of brand new Harley Davidsons. They have the Road Glide and the Street Glide in here. Um, a lot. So I know it's like not really springtime yet, not exactly warm yet, but if you guys want to get into Barrow Harley Davidson North or East, they have so much inventory. I'm waiting for my bike to finish up getting serviced and it's just like fun looking at all of the eye candy in here. <laughs> getting me. We just finished service and uh, look what these Look what these goobers are doing. Oh, this thing just died. <laughs> Gotta test out all the sirens. Columbus PD bikes, man. white bike she is a beauty so we actually didn't get the uh, parts in today that I thought we were gonna get so that's gonna come in a later video but look oh my pockets closed yay oh that's lovely all right time to gear back up and hop on the motorcycle I just you know it's so funny when you are so used to riding your motorcycle and then you get it serviced and it's like, wow, that actually rides a lot better. I don't ever really notice that things are getting a little used and abused until I get the bike serviced. And then I'm like, oh, is that what it's supposed to feel like? This is nice. I don't know how to explain it. Just the responsiveness is so nice. But yeah, I, uh, I thought I was gonna have some other parts, I guess those. Uh, and so when I was living in Florida, I had some stuff shipped to Florida, like the heated grips and the windshield but I forgot to update my address. So we're gonna get those things ordered here soon, but I'm definitely looking into getting some new, um, new audio for this motorcycle, some new speakers. And like I said, the base models really do just come with base model stuff that you can still hear the speakers, just not when you're doing over 70 miles an hour. Open my visor so I can see you guys. Hi, I know it's kind of bright behind me. But yeah, I wanna get some new speakers. And then if you don't notice, I took off the tour pack behind me. The tour pack is great for just, you know, throwing stuff in there, grocery shopping, putting my helmet somewhere safe. But I don't like the way it looks and uh, nothing against the tour pack. I just, I think it looks like a little more old man bike than I want it to. Cause I am an old man, but I ain't that old. <laughs> But I really enjoy putting um, a luggage rack and a sissy bar on my motorcycles. Believe it or not, I can pack way, way, way more stuff with a luggage rack and a sissy bar than I can on a tour pack. And the tour pack that I had on here doesn't have the luggage rack on top. So it's just a little sleeker, I think. And I know how to pack what I own. So that's a that's an easy way to travel around. So those items will be coming down the road. Other than that, guys, I want to keep this bike as close to stock as possible. Does that mean that I don't ever want to throw a cam in it or try to add a little extra horsepower or a little more efficiency? No, but I'm not going to be building a performance bagger with this thing. This is my touring bike. I feel like I went a little too performance bagger with Appa because I wanted him to look and sound cool. And then I slowly started uh, not enjoying the touring part of it. So <laughs> that's one thing. I really want to keep this bike is a primarily touring motorcycle. I mean, I've had the thing for less than two months and I haven't even ridden every single day and we already have over 5,000 miles on it. Hi, cows. <laughs> so definitely want to keep the bike as comfortable as possible. Oh, one thing I do want to mention, I was just at Farrah Harley Davidson. They are literally about to kick off their riding academy. If you guys are interested or if you know anyone interested in learning how to ride a motorcycle, I actually have a partner with Harley Davidson for this and I have a $75 off coupon. I'll have it linked down in the description below. Um, I wanted to let you guys know if you go to the Riding Academy website on Harley Davidson, it'll save you $75. Find your local dealership and get registered now. 
Pharaoh has already, they, they're booked up until I think May. So those classes go super quick and both dealerships offer the riding academy. So I, it's getting warmer. I'm finally in my normal gloves, not my heated gloves, but I do have the heated grips on. So check out that link below, go sign up for that and save $75. That's a, that's a big savings. Oh my God, there's so much gravel on the road right here. Jeez, that is so dangerous finally on a nice new bike with modern technology with you know traction control and abs and corner assisted traction control i don't remember but it's <laughs> these new bikes are really nice and that's one thing i, I want to be pretty honest about i've had a lot of you guys ask me like why you just bought oppa i bought him in 2021 okay so we, he's been I, I, i've had him for a little bit and yes i had the goal of trying to put 100,000 miles on that bike but at the end of the day I told you man <laughs> last year during the Harley Davidson homecoming rally up in Milwaukee the 120th anniversary they released the 2023 CBO uh, they asked me if I wanted to do a press ride on that bike and absolutely yes I did what I didn't expect is how much it was really gonna blow my mind when it comes to riding the bike I'm used to the big heavy Harleys. That's what I love. I love motorcycles that feel like they have substance. A lot of people talk about weight and distribution and blah, blah, blah. Like I get it, man. I bought my bike on purpose, okay? It wasn't an accident. But when I rode that brand new CBO and I could physically feel it in the neck, in the steering and the handling, I literally backed that motorcycle up, walking it on a slight hill on a full bagger and I was like what the hell why is this so easy number one my road glide is a little bit lifted oppa is about an inch or two taller than the stock motorcycles but it's not that bad I have long legs but it really really came down to the actual weight distribution and the way these motorcycles ride a lot of people aren't into the new technology a lot of people aren't into the new modern look the headlights the taillights the you know the styling of the bike that's great don't buy it i absolutely fell in love with it i love that it looked different enough to entice a new audience to it and uh there is no shame in liking the older models you know they are so popular for a reason and you can always buy an older model harley that's not going anywhere for me personally the type of riding that i do i knew that this was going to be my next step i just once again i didn't want to go into debt so like i said Harley offered me an amazing deal on this bike. I could not say no. And the only way in my heart I knew that I felt comfortable getting this motorcycle for what I got it for is I'm probably gonna have to get rid of Appa. And I'm sure it's absolutely gonna devastate me when the time actually comes. But as of right now, I'm, I feel very good about it. You know, Appa and I built an amazing life together. He really opened my horizons as a motorcyclist and as a solo traveler, you know, being alone on the road for as long as I was alone on the road for him, with him, a big, heavy motorcycle. And he just took care of me and he was popular. Everyone loved him. I loved him. And it's, I think it's time to find a new owner for him. So that's where I, I this is where I actually would really appreciate your guys' advice. <laughs> I want to know if you think that I should sell Appa, just sell him outright, you know, whoever wants him will get him. Or if you think I should raffle him. And here's the thing, I cannot donate this motorcycle. Um, as much as I would love to, it he's, <laughs> I, I can't afford to donate. Um, those motorcycles are still selling for upwards in the twenty twenty thousand dollar range online at dealerships and stuff like he is a perfectly perfect in perfect con condition motorcycle so i can't give him away unfortunately so it's going to come down to either selling him to whoever wants him the most or a raffle and i've never raffled a motorcycle before i don't know if that's the right way to go here because here's what i don't want to happen i love this motorcycle i'm very attached to this motorcycle and I don't want to raffle him off to somebody who is just going to turn around and sell him to somebody else or give him away or someone who don't doesn't want him. And I know that sounds so stupid because it's a motorcycle. It's a machine, an inanimate object. 
but he's my baby and he feels like I want him to go to a good home <laughs> if that makes any sense at all so please leave a comment down below on what you think I should do um, but as of right now I still have him he is my baby he's insured I own him I can take him for rides I can do whatever I want but I know in my heart, I just signed the paperwork on this bike. I cannot keep both motorcycles. Uh, everyone who says that Jordan can ride it, Jordan really is not into big bikes, guys. Everyone thinks that I'm a mean, evil wife because he rides a Sportster and I ride really nice baggers. That is by choice. <laughs> I have no control over what that man wants. And he loves working on his Sportster. He loves learning and modifying it, building custom things. And he likes how light they are. And he has his dirt bike now. He has his Suzuki. And if he does need a bagger to ride long distance with, first of all, he really enjoys the Dyna. The Dyna is still lightweight enough that he is comfortable maneuvering that thing. Remember, my husband's got a bad back, all right? Like, ain't no shame. A lot of you guys watching also have messed up backs because I've seen your comments. <laughs> but if he needs a touring bike, Jordan actually really likes the BMW. Yes, I, I still have the BMW, guys. I own my bikes. These are my bikes. They're not just loaner bikes. And the BMW is a wonderful motorcycle. It has the cruise control, heated grips, heated seat, and reverse and that's the number one reason Jordan will never want to ride Appa long distance now he says that he likes the sound of Appa and he likes how gurgly and chuggy and like sexy he is but the BMW is actually just a really nice ride and especially for somebody who has back issues having that reverse gear on an almost 900 pound motorcycle is a game changer so that's why I'm not giving Jordan my road glide he doesn't want it. <laughs> Go ask him. He has a YouTube channel too. Go spam his comments. <laughs> okay, there is one more thing. I really, we did not do it in this video. So we're actually going to time travel here real fast. Let's head back over to Florida and check out my super secret product surprise that we did during Daytona Bike Week. All right, we're doing a little bit of time jumping, time warping in this video, but we are back in Daytona Motorcycle Week or Daytona Bike Week. And I got my guy, Eddie, back here from, you might know him from some previous videos, working on my BMW, got some Wonderlic parts, and now we are installing the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde exhaust. I'm gonna show you what we're putting on, but today you said we're doing some what, slip-ons? We're doing slip-ons on this, and then uh, we just released a two into one. It's still in uh, pre-production right now. But they should be developed in um, the next month or two, and then I think we're gonna do a two and a one. That's yeah, the dude. So I'm gonna show you what the two and a one looks like, but I'm gonna show you what we're putting on this bike right now. So as you guys should know by now, this is my beautiful new Harley Davidson Road Glide, my baby. And these are the slip-ons that we are putting on this exhaust. So I'm gonna show you what these sound like, but obviously they have the electronics for the valve control. I'm gonna go show you what that looks like right now up here. So this is inside and there's like a little tiny valve right here that'll open and close with the press of a button so this is going to give you like that straight pipe sound there's a little halfway and then fully shut so the two into one exhaust that he was just talking about is actually over here on their brand new 2024 harley davidson road glide look at that yeah baby that's what we're gonna put on here soon pre-production but I wanna let you guys know, uh, probably available on the website right now if you're watching. If not, head over to the jekyllandhyde.us. I'll have the link down in the description. I have a 10% off code for you guys. So if you use code her 2 wheels 10 at checkout, you can save 10% off yours. All right, back to the install. These guys are machines, man. They have been here all week installing parts right off the fly. They make parts for Pan Americas. We got Triumph. So, I mean, basically you got BMW, Indian, Harley, Triumph, all kinds of stuff. This is their exhaust. They also make, uh, Wonderlic makes seats and, well, not seats, gee, sorry. I meant parts for all of these different motorcycles. So this is a uh, Wonderlic and this is so cool. I didn't know. You can fold this down because I guess over in Germany, they have laws where you have to keep your windshield clean. So that's just, man, the people who invent this stuff, you can tell they ride. So obviously, you know, I have my beautiful R18 back home. I have a ton of Wonderlic parts on that bike, but I think right now just my favorite thing is the exhaust because I want to be obnoxious and I want to be quiet. <laughs> do you guys do bike washes too? <laughs> <laughs> you know, bug slides right down there. Oh yeah. 
Don't we'll wipe, we'll wipe your whole bike down. This baby is dirty. Ah, uh, she's been ridden. Been ridden, man. A little over 3,500 miles on it already. Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> Cross country trip will do that. That's probably the most miles on a road glide right now, I'd say 24 road glide. I hope so. That'd be awesome. So my goal was to put 100,000 miles on my 2018 and then this came out and I was like, Fuck. You gotta do it. I know. What a game changer this bike is, huh? It's beautiful, man. The, the, the handling, yeah, the bar, like just the ergonomics in general. Yeah. Amazing. So what, what they like to say at Harley Davidson is everything on this motorcycle is brand new, except the chassis, basically, except the frame. So brand new motorcycle, same frame. So as far as I know, this is the first motorcycle, the Harley Davidson Road Glide 2024, to do an iron foot. should consider getting one of those SP connects. Nothing at all, no. So Jordan just asked the the switch controller plugs directly into the factory harness. So he's gonna show us. So here's the plug here. Uh-huh. This is the factory plug. It's your diagnostic port. And we just get our 12 volt system through that. So if you do go to service, they just unplug it, do what they gotta do, and then they replug it back in. And then there, you can also buy, so if there's another company, like if you get lighting or anything like that, you also purchase a Y wire. Yeah. So you have multiple connections at that point. But what that's doing is it's safely connected to the bike without voiding any kind of warranty. Nice. nice. So it's 100% plug and play. That's big no, that's point. huge. Yeah. Huge point. You know what's really important to say is that when the bike is going to sleep, the, it doesn't have any power anymore. So then also the computer doesn't take any power anymore. So that's why it's not a parasitic yeah. draw. That's very yeah. important. Yeah, so where do you work with it? When it works with the CAN bus, that's another cool thing too, is when the CAN bus system shuts down, I think we want to say about 45 seconds after you turn the ignition off, the valves automatically close and then everything shuts off. Nice. It's pretty well thought I out. I love it. And another thing too, I can keep going, is <laughs> everywhere in the world, except for the USA, you can only have a Jekyll and Hyde purchased and installed by a factory, Harley, BMW, Indian, and Triumph dealer. No way. So that just goes to show how confident these manufacturers are with our product. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Like being on the road and deciding last minute you want to buy something like this and having any OEM manufacturer install it, that's huge. I honestly didn't know that. So I just look for the excuse to ride back down to South Carolina and go see these guys. <laughs> Once again, Jesus, I don't even think we were in here 20 minutes. They are cranking it out. I know by the time you guys are watching this, I'm gonna be back home in Ohio, but they have knocked it out of the park. Um, I got that 10% off code. You guys gotta go check out the website. Even if you don't buy anything, just, actually, I don't know. Window shopping's gotten me into a lot of trouble. So <laughs> hit them over on their uh, Instagram. I'm gonna get out of the sun here so I can talk to you guys. Hit them over on Instagram, JekyllandHyle.com. Jekyll and Hyde, that's what I'm trying to say. Check them out on Instagram, Facebook, we got their website, JekyllandHyde.us, Her Two Wheels 10. I hope you guys enjoy the uh, shopping experience. I'm going to enjoy my beautiful Harley Davidson. I really hope that came through on camera, you guys, because it sounds immaculate in person. Um, Jekyll and Hyde is an amazing company. I just discovered them last year in Sturgis and they have been the utmost just respectful people. They make an amazing product and I just love the entire team in general. So they have never, ever, ever done this before. And I'm not being paid to tell you this. They gave you guys a 10% off code linked down in the description below. They have only done that for the Her Two Wheels channel. So if you guys are interested, definitely go check it out. Having the option 
to turn the sound off while I'm doing 3000 RPM and 85 miles an hour down the road is amazing. Um, I've used it a lot. I've ridden with the stock exhaust sound a lot, but being able to just kind of like pop it off, open the valve and have a straight pipe sounding Harley Davidson, nothing can beat it. So if you guys are interested, check out the link down in the description and huge shout out to Jekyll and Hyde for making an amazing product. But yeah, she's uh, she's all mine. I don't know if you can see her back there. I'm gonna, gonna give you guys the name here soon, hopefully, but it's, it's surreal. You know, nine years ago when I started riding motorcycles and I was tooling around on a Honda Shadow, never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would be traveling across the country on beautiful brand new motorcycles. For the sake of your wallet, once you ride a bagger, you don't go back. Do not test ride this motorcycle, <laughs> I'm telling you. And for those of you that have test ridden this bike, leave a comment down below and let me know if you bought it. <laughs> Guys, I have some really exciting news coming up in the next couple weeks. So if you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting the subscribe button on the channel. We're getting so close to 200,000 subscribers. It's a slow and stressful journey, but hopefully with the help of you and the free subscription, we can get there. Thank you so much for watching this video. And until my next one, as always, you be good, ride motorcycles, and I'll see you later.